I tell you, mister, the kingfish ain't here. Listen, you tell me that every time I come up here. Now, I've been a bill collector for 14 years, and I know every trick of the game. This time, I'm going in and look for myself. you up trying to collect their money. It's been one phone call after another, and they're sick and tired of it. Now, do you intend to do something about it or not? Yes, I'm going to do something about it. What? I'm going to take out my phone. Stephen, this is your last warning. Either you pay these bills, or by next week I'll drag you into court. And that's final. Yes, sir. Mm, the butcher, the baker, the drugstore, Oh, me. Oh, what can I do for you, miss? My name is Juliet Williams. I never heard of you. Never heard of me? Why, I spoke to you this morning on the phone. Uh, look, you got me mixed up with somebody else. I'm uh, sorry, but I'll have to ask you to get on out now, because I got a lot on my mind here. But don't you remember? I told you over the phone that I was going to the bank to get the money for you. Now, I ain't got no time to... Uh... <laughs> oh, uh, sit right down, miss. Uh, sit right down. Are you comfortable? It's quite possible that I might have the wrong address. Oh, no. Uh, this is the right place, all right. Well, I just want to make sure. Is this West 135th Street or East 135th Street? Well, uh, which one was the one you wanted? West 135th Street. Well, this is west, all right. The sun sets on that window every afternoon. Well, this must be the right place, then. I guess you're just so busy these days, you forgot that I called. Oh, no, no. I remember it almost perfect. I remember starting off saying hello, then later on, I remember saying goodbye. But the only thing that kind of hated was come in between there. <laughs> uh, well, we were discussing a fee that I'm to pay you. Now, do you remember whether it was $5 or $10? That I didn't forget. $10. <laughs> now, that would make a balance of $90, is that right? That's right. Thank you. Uh, now, could you tell me exactly what I'm going to get for my money? Uh, <laughs> you want to know exactly what you're going to get for your money. Well, I'll give it to you in detail. Naturally, that includes all incidentals, includes all miscellaneous, includes all the sundries, includes all the extras. And on top of that, it includes all the inclusive. Well, that both does it, I guess. <laughs> oh, I, I see. I hope you'll forgive me for asking all these questions. But a girl's got to be very careful when she goes to a matrimonial agency. Mm, that's what I is. Uh, uh, what you... uh, that's what I is, all right. That's what I is. And I ain't got the oldest matrimonial agency in the business. And I guarantee you to get you a man. Oh, I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, I guarantee you to get you a legible $90 bachelor within 24 hours. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, but by the way, uh, have you got a photograph of yourself? Oh, why, certainly. <laughs> uh, sit down here, Andy, and I'll show it to you. <laughs> now, Andy, when you look at this gal's figure, there's one thing I want you to remember. That this picture was taken by a camera with a bulging lens. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Well, her face ain't bad, uh, but look at that shape there. She's protruding all over the place. <laughs> Looks like a stack of used tires standing there. But ain't they? That's the best part of her. Now, a lot of men marry a little skinny woman, and then they got to work their heads off to make enough money to blubber her up. <laughs> With that gal, you get one that's already been pre-blubbered. Uh, I guess you're right about all that, Gingrich. But I still don't see why I need a wife. Handy, 
I can answer that with one word. Companionship. All down through the ages, everything goes in pairs. Romeo and Juliet, key for two, double indemnity, walla walla, and everything. Yeah, I guess you're right about that. Oh, and the companionship was everywhere. Oh, I agree with you about companionship. Just a thing, all right. I like the gals and everything, but I just don't want to marry none of them. I uh, tried in the wool bachelor. Hmm, you like to go out with the gals, but you don't want to marry them. That's right. Just because the fella likes bread ain't no sign he's gonna buy a bakery. Yeah, but look, Andy, what about the night you ain't got a date? You got to go over to the pool room by yourself. Yeah, I admit that. Well, if you was married, you could go out with your wife. Yeah, but how does I know I'm gonna marry a gal what can shoot pool? I wanna speak about this gal here, uh, Juliet. Now, she would make the most wonderful wife that a man could have. But if you don't want to meet her, that's your business. But I think you're passing up what might be the opportunity of a lifetime. Well, I guess there ain't no harm in meeting her. Give me a telephone number and I'll make a date. Andrew Brown. Won't you come in? <laughs> yeah, thanks. I hope you like my cooking, Mr. Brown. I'll go get some rolls. Mr. Brown? Oh, uh, well, you see, I got a little indigestion already, and I don't think that I... Uh, of course, uh, but is this one of them yellow diamonds? No, it's a genuine blue white. Yeah. Any flaws in it? No, perfect stone. Hmm, about two carrots. Oh, no, about six and a half. Excuse me, please. Niagara Falls sure is nice this time of year, ain't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> but, Mr. Brown, I thought you didn't care for croquettes. Oh, certainly. Ain't nothing I like better than croquettes floating in grease. <laughs> and ain't nothing better than a little indigestion to pepper man up. Well, Juliet, it's been a wonderful evening. And I'd like to see you again tomorrow night, if you don't mind. Oh, why, certainly, Andy. Shall we say for dinner? Uh, well, personally, if you don't mind, I'd like to say, uh, after dinner. Oh, all right, then, Andy. It's a date. Well, Miss Williams, come right on in. Come right on in. And I'm glad to hear that the courtship between you and Andy Brown has been progressing so good the last couple of weeks. And, uh, by the way, uh, if you got that $90 balance, I'll give you a receipt for the whole thing, and then we can close the deal. Uh, but, Mr. Stevens, I came here for another reason. Yeah? Uh, you see, I'm a little confused about something. Oh, uh, what's that? Well, I'll be very frank. There's a man that lives across the hall from me, uh, whom I've known for quite some time. And he has suddenly become very, very attentive. As a matter of fact, he proposed to me and offered me a beautiful diamond engagement ring. Now, wait a minute here. Uh, don't do nothing hasty, because I know for a positive fact that Andrew H. Brown has been shopping around the last couple of days for a diamond engagement ring. And in fact, he figured on proposing to you tonight. Oh, really? Well, frankly, I've been considering the other gentleman. But I'll wait until tonight before I give him my answer. Yeah, that's right. Now, and don't do nothing until you hear from Andy. I'm so glad you told me this. I'll be waiting for Andy tonight. Bye. Bye, Miss Williams. Holy smoke, there goes my 90 buck commission down the drain. 
Them diamond engagement rings run into real money. And Andy ain't got a dime. Hello, Andy? Listen, we in serious trouble, son. Yeah, the ship of matrimony has done sprung a leak. Uh, ain't there no way you can get a ring, Andy? No, Amos, I is flat broke. Uh, but the kingfish say he's gonna try to work out something. I hope he does. Cause getting down to brass facts, I is a lonely man. And I was just beginning to fall in love with Juliet. Well, it'd have been a wonderful thing for you, Andy. You know, uh, a man got a feel that he belongs to somebody. And all you is doing is wandering around like a lost sheep, huh? I know, Amos. And I have always felt that if I could have a marriage that turned out half as good as yours, I'd be happy. Well, mine ain't no exception, Andy. And, and all that complaining Kingfish do about Sapphire, he, he really don't mean it. That's right, Amos. Because the Kingfish was saying on it the other day that there ain't nothing like coming home and hearing the pitter-patter of your wife's knees on the kitchen floor. <laughs> I tell you, Andy, it's a simple, logical way to go about getting an engagement ring. I don't see why I didn't think of it before. It's the only intelligent thing to do. But Kingfish, I still say you is taking a chance slipping Sapphire's engagement ring off her finger while she's sleeping. Look, Andy, you got too much at stake. You got to get on the ball and fast, cause Juliet got another pitcher warming up in the bullpen. <laughs> now, once I get Sapphire's engagement ring, why, you can rush over to Juliet's with it, and then you know what to do from then on. Okay, Kingfish. I'll be waiting on your back porch tonight for you to hand it to me. Right. Now, all I got to do is find a way to get Sapphire to sleep early. And then you can rush over to Juliet's and fight your bra. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this canasta sounds like a wonderful game, Mama. <laughs> I hope I can learn it. Well, it ain't too hard, Sapphire. The main thing you got to remember is to make a canasta. And a canasta is seven cards all of the same kind. Yeah, I know all that, Mama. See, I'm so excited about all this, especially since we got such a nice long evening ahead of us. <laughs> Warm milk for everybody. Oh, thank you, George. Thanks, Baldy. Yeah, this is that great stuff for making you feel relaxed and restful. So you can have a good night's sleep. <laughs> now, don't forget, Sapphire. The red three is kind of hunted, and the black three is freeze to death. Mm hmm. Hmm. I don't see why anybody want to waste their time playing a crazy game like that. This ain't a crazy game. It takes brains to play this game. That's why in this house it'll always be a two-handed game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll go out on the back porch and get some air. You got the ring, Kingfish? No, Andy. It looks like it's gonna be a long haul. So you better go down to the drugstore and call Juliet and make your date for 1130. And then hurry right back here and wait for me. Okay, but hurry up, because it's getting awful cold out here. <laughs> oh, gee, Mama, that's 2,000 more points for me. <laughs> Warm milk for everybody. <laughs> I don't think Mama or I care anymore. Oh, listen, honey, go ahead and drink it. It'll relax you. It'll make you sleep good, soothe your nerves, calm everybody down around here. <laughs> Kingfish, I thought you'd never make it. Where's the ring? They're still up, Andy. Oh, but Kingfish, I can't wait much longer. It's getting cold. I'll tell you what, Andy, you've got to postpone your date again. I'll tell Juliet that you'll be over at 12.30. Oh, man. All right. Mama, I'm over 2,000 points ahead of you. <coughs> ah, you're going to have to play all night to catch up with me. Well, honey, I ain't got no place to go. <laughs>
Mary Jo, I believe you. <laughs> mm. Look, Sasha. Elsie is fast asleep. John. John, you're trying to go to bed. Warm milk for everybody. <laughs> Kingfish. I got the ring, Andy. Oh, thank goodness for that. That's why I sure have a little finger, all right. Uh, that's the whole idea, Andy. Uh, Juliet is a little on the heavy side, and that ring will never fit her finger. And after she tries to put it on... I know. I'll take it back and tell her I'm going to get her right size. And that way, at least she'll know I'm serious, and then we can go ahead with the wedding. Yeah, and once you are married and start nibbling on that community property, why, you can buy the ring you promised her. Yeah, I'll hurry over to you that night. Yeah, but look, Andy, hurry right back with that ring so I can stick it back on Sapphire's finger before she wake up. I'll do that. <laughs> Julia, I'm sorry to keep you up so late, but will you marry me? Uh, but, Andy, this is so sudden. Juliet, honey, I couldn't wait to rush over here to give you this ring. Sorry it don't fit. But I haven't tried it on yet. Why, Andy, that's serious. Why, this ring fits perfectly. Well, I'll take it back to the jeweler. Uh... <laughs> what was that you were saying? This is the most gorgeous ring I've ever seen. Look at that diamond. And it's surprising to know you knew enough to buy such a small ring. Because even though I'm plump, I have very small fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, the way this ring fits my finger, it's like it was made for me. Like it was meant for me to wear forever. Forever, darling, till death do us part. Yeah, it can't come too soon for me. But, Kingfish, I couldn't help it cause the ring fit her. Well, you could see she had small fingers. Why didn't you try slipping it on her thumb or something? <laughs> I'll tell you, Kingfish, after Juliet and me is married, I'll slip it off her finger some night, just like you done it with Sapphire. Yeah, but it's gonna be a couple of weeks before you inoculate it up. Well, what's gonna happen in the meantime? Yeah, well, there's just one thing we got to watch out for, Kingfish. We got to make sure that these two women don't meet up with each other so that Sapphire won't see that ring. Yeah, that's what we got to be careful of. Because these two, once meet up, me and you are going to be getting our mail in the fracture ward. <laughs> Honey, I home. I'm in the kitchen, George. Well, how was everything, honey? I still haven't found the ring, George. I don't know what to do. Oh, Sapphire, it's bound to be around the house here somewhere, like I told you. It'll turn up someday. Well, I hope you're right, George. Mm, well, what's all this? Must be going to have some festivities around here. I'm having a few people up this evening. Would you please take this tray of glasses into the living room? Mm, certainly, dear. By the way, I ran into Amos on Lennox Avenue today. He tells me Andy's engaged to get married. He said you introduced him. Yes, a beautiful romance. I invited Andy and Miss Williams up for the evening. <laughs> Julia, I tell you, I'm sick. And we 
can't go visiting here tonight. Angie, I don't understand you. You were perfectly all right till I said we were coming up here tonight. Yeah, I know. But this sickness done hit me all of a sudden. I got fever. I suffering from streptococcus or something like that. Ring the bell, Angie. Uh, but, honey. Oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> Listen, honey. Just one thing. You know it ain't ladylike to flash jewelry. So instead of showing your ring to Sapphire, why don't you just keep your glove on and let her admire the bulge? <laughs> well, hello there. I'm Sapphire Stevens. Hi there. It's so good to know you, Sapphire. Hi, Sapphire. Juliet, you know George. Oh, why, yes. Good evening. Many thanks for everything. Please, don't mention it. <laughs> you got some happy things, dear. Oh, don't take off your glove, Miss Williams. You are standing right in a draft, and you're liable to catch your death of cold in your hand. Uh, yeah, you might get pneumonia of the fingers. <laughs> That's so silly. <laughs> Just make yourself comfortable. You know, post office and Parcheesi are two great games. I still haven't got a look at Juliet's ring. But how about Blind Man's Blood? George, I've had enough of this foolishness. Now, you stop it immediately. I've been trying to see Juliet's ring for two minutes now. Uh, maybe you could see it better if I slipped it off her finger. What happened? Where's my ring? I don't know. It kind of slipped out of my hand. Oh, uh, wait a minute. We can look for it some other time. Let's all go to our movie. What's the matter with you, George? I'm sure it landed over here someplace. <laughs> <laughs> well, can five play at this game? <laughs> Juliet lost her ring. That's what we're looking for. Get some sleep. Warm milk for everybody. <laughs> 